So the video for today will be the part one of the negative levels compilation. These are the first seven negative levels. We are at the halfway point of finishing the negative level series. Hopefully you enjoy this nice compilation. Thank you for watching and supporting me, and I will see you later. Backrooms level negative zero is classified as class pending, which pretty much means everything is unsecured and undetermined. It's thought to be the first negative level in the backrooms, and it looks like the regular level zero, except it's really glitchy and colorful. It pretty much has the same layout as the normal level zero. The colors on this level can be anything from bright pink to purple to black to complete white out areas where you can't even see anything because it's so white to completely glitched out areas. It really just depends on where you are. There aren't any documented entities here, and there are not any bases or outposts either. That's just like normal level zero. The only way to enter this glitchy level is by trying to no clip to the normal level zero from another level and it'll put you here. But this only works on rare occasions, so don't go trying it. To exit the level, it says there isn't one, so good luck on that. Next up is backrooms level negative one, which is classified as class two, so it's unsafe, but it has a low entity count. The level looks like an infinite white hallway with black doors on each side. Each of these doors leads to either level negative two, level zero, the whiteouts, or level two. When you're inside of level negative one, you won't hear that annoying buzz from level zero. You'll actually hear a quiet piano music playing in the background. And no one knows where the sound comes from, and the sound never gets closer or farther away, no matter how deep you walk into the level. The biggest change you'll notice while walking deeper into the level is that your vision itself will start to glitch out, and it'll become staticky at random times. While this is happening, you'll start to hear random advertisements playing inside of your head, and these advertisements are retro ads from like the 1920s and 30s. And while you're in this state of mind, you'll be able to see these humanoid entities in old business outfits walking around the level. You couldn't see them before this happened, but you can see them when you're seeing the glitchy stuff. Although you won't be able to make out any details or anything, you'll just be able to see a humanoid shape with business clothes on. Now at this point in the level when you're starting to see this weird stuff, most people freak out and turn around and run back the other way. And when they do that, they run into an entity that only goes by one name, Nutricia, or Nutricia, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. There's no information on this entity, and that's the only name we have for it, so. There are no bases here, and you can enter this level by breaking a wall on level zero. And to exit the level, you can just take one of those black doors that I mentioned earlier, and you can just open up the door and look in, and if it's a level you don't like, don't go there but it's recommended to try to go to a positive level. Level negative two is classified as a class four survival difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure with a medium entity count. Also, sorry, my voice is kind of weird. My nose is stopped up. What's new? The entire area of level negative two is actually split between four different sub areas, which I'll explain in a second. The whole level is considered to be dangerous all the time because there are multiple undocumented hostile entities and multiple properties that are not understood about it all. And the level itself actually emits a really weird energy that attracts wanderers to it as soon as they get close to an entrance door to the level. It sort of lures them in. No one knows how or why this happens, so that's pretty creepy. Now I'm going to get into the four different areas of the level. The first part is called the pool. This area is a huge flooded unfinished basement with wood pillars and support beams placed all around. There's also a bunch of pipes and vents on the walls and ceilings, and there's actually uncovered electrical wires that run across the walls as well. That's a recipe for disaster. The only light source in the area are these orange light bulbs on the roof that kind of emit a really calming glow. The water that's flooded this basement is actually almond water, but it's not even safe to drink because it's really high in dirt and iron content, and apparently there's like a harmful bacteria that lives in the water as well, so that's no fun. One of the weird things that happens in this section of the level is that sometimes you can get teleported from one spot in the water to another spot. Like you could just randomly be walking and then be teleported to a completely different hallway. Other than the teleporting though, and the other stuff I mentioned, nothing else has really been discovered about this area. And the only really weird thing 
minus the flooded floors of course, is that all the hallways in this zone take only right turns, 90 degree angle turns to be exact. There's never a rounded turn or a hallway, and some of the halls themselves are so short and so skinny that you could get claustrophobia from it. So if you get claustrophobia, don't come here, and if you have hydrophobia and claustrophobia, definitely don't come here. How deep the water is literally changes all the time, so it's advised to be extremely cautious when you're walking around the level. The safest spots in this zone are always where those orange lights are glowing, because when you get there you can see and it's less dangerous, and when you escape that light area and it's all dark, wanderers have reported extreme paranoia. The water itself has had some weird occurrences too, like one time it apparently moved on its own and tried to talk to someone by spouting up water in the air, so the water might be sentient, we don't know. To get to the next zone that I'm about to talk about, you have to walk through the halls of the flooded zone and eventually they'll change into the next level and become less flooded gradually. However, in these halls, there's actually an entity called the Screamers that live here. They're tall humanoids that have no face except a huge mouth and literally all they do, their only purpose, is that they scream at the top of their lungs at wanderers and paralyze them with fear. The screams can only be heard by the wanderer that's being attacked though, so if you get screamed at, no one's gonna come to help you because they can't hear it. Okay. So if you make it past the screamers and the flooded claustrophobic hallways, the next part of the level is called the Hall of Dull Flames. And this is a huge expanse of baby blue concreted walls and ceilings with white carpet on the floor. This entire zone has these blue lanterns that emit this really weird blue light that basks the walls and the ceiling. Speaking of the walls, the walls themselves look like they're kind of vintage from the Victorian era specifically, and there's paintings on the walls from the 1600s. There's been a bunch of reports in this area actually about some weird sounds that happen, like a distorted piano playing Beethoven or the sounds of screaming. The main entities in these blue halls are actually skin stealers and screamers, of course. Not too bad. But in very rare cases, the blue lights here will turn red, which actually means that you should stop moving instantly until they turn blue again. Because if you keep walking when they're red, you'll literally and physically fade from existence. The next zone is called the Abyss. I wonder if it'll be scary or not. This area is a huge void type zone where everything surrounding you is pitch black except what's right in front of you. There are some weird structures in this zone too. Like there's entire pieces of furniture and kitchen appliances that are literally made from forks and knives and stuff like that, just kitchen utensils. And there's also this really faint ticking noise that can be heard wherever you are in the Abyss. And I guess I was wrong about this zone being scary, because it says right here on the wiki dot that the zone is actually safe. You love to see it. Most wanderers end up finding the exit to the entire level here in the abyss. So the areas past this zone are mostly undocumented, except for one, which I'll talk about now. The last zone is called the Kafkaski Maze. Kafkaski Maze? I think that's how you say it. This zone is a huge maze made out of big bushes with purple leaves. And there's actually a sky here, and it's bright blue with clouds, and the grass on the ground is also purple, just like the bushes. And there's these random statues of clocks around, but other than this, everything else about this zone is pretty much not known. And there's sometimes these random empty pedestals with no statues on top, and each of these pedestals has a bronze card on it that says the Shavik. No clue what that means, but... I mean, it sounds pretty weird and creepy. I guess this zone is just a big area with purple bushes and grass and random statues of clocks. Pretty weird. So that's it for the documented zones of level negative 2, and there aren't any bases in any of them, but apparently Meg is trying to set up a base in the abyss. To enter level negative 2, you can enter any of the doors from level negative 1, or you can noclip through a yellow wall on level 13 to be sent here. To exits, you can find a set of out of place stairs randomly around the level, and they'll take you to level 14, or you can just find the entrance to level negative 3 which doesn't exist somehow, on any of the zones except for the pool. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative 4, which is classified as a class undetermined because of some really weird and creepy mysterious properties that I'll get into in a second. Physically, it looks like a huge dark forest with literally no signs of human or animal life. 
just a massive untamed forest pretty much. Everyone who enters this level always enters from the exact same spot, which just so happens to be inside of a barn that's been randomly placed in the middle of the woods. And this is actually the only structure on this level. Now other than what I just said, this level is pretty much undocumented and it's kind of hard to travel in because the compasses that you have and the flashlights you could use, they'll randomly break or stop working when you're out in the woods. So it's kind of like the level doesn't want to be explored. There aren't any outposts here, but there's been a bunch of attempts by Meg to start one up and all of them have failed. These are pretty creepy, so watch out. The first attempt was called Outpost Charity and it was founded a year after level negative 4 was discovered. It was located right next to that barn you spawn in at, and the group that made this outpost was five MEG volunteers, which were given two months of supplies up front. They were supposed to distribute these supplies evenly among each other, but when the second supply crate got there and was dropped off, the five members never came to get it, so MEG sent out a search team to find them. They found the members in a circle around the original rations crate, and they were all holding hands, and they were all unalived due to malnutrition. None of the rations inside of the supply crate were even touched. It was completely full, but for some reason they were all holding hands standing around it and weren't even alive. That's terrifying. The next failed outpost was called Outpost Burns, and this was created four months after that first incident. This one had three members who lived without issue for three months, but when the fourth month came along, all three people vanished from the camp area. The only evidence left behind was actually a picture taken by one of the members while they were still at camp, and on the back of the picture it was written in scribbly handwriting, going north, don't follow. None of the three people were ever found again. The third failed outpost is kind of lame. Pretty much it was four people who burned down their rations. Not gonna lie, that's kind of lame. Now the last failed outpost I'm going to talk about was called Outpost Red Forest. This actually was started by 13 people in a collaboration between Meg and the followers of Jerry. It was made right at the barn's entrance and it lasted a full 8 months before it fell. Out of all 13 members, only 3 survived and the ones that did survive have severe issues in their head right now. Apparently, the 10 that didn't make it were all unalived by an undocumented being called the Grey One. And just like the first time, these people were all in a circle holding hands inside of the barn. Not cool, bro. So if I had to guess, the entity that destroyed this outpost was also the same one that destroyed the first outpost as well. It kind of reminds me of the Blair Witch though. If you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. To enter this weird level, you can walk through one of the doors on level negative one, which will put you back in that barn, and to exit, all you have to do is wander into the woods, and you'll randomly noclip back to level negative one, or on to level negative five, which I'll talk about in the next negative levels video. Level negative five is classified as a class zero, so it's safe and secure, with no entities. Well, kinda. Let's get a round of applause for a negative level being safe. Physically, the level looks like a huge field that's been covered in snow. And apparently this level actually isn't that big because if you walk out really far in any direction, you'll just be teleported right behind where you spawned in. Somewhere in the depths of this level, there's actually a really old looking World War II era concrete structure with a door on one side and a hole in the wall on the other side. This building just seems to be randomly put here, since it's the only real building here, and it's unknown why it's there. The only real threat to you here is the cold temperatures, but even hypothermia doesn't work like it does in real life here, and it only sets in at a lower temperature, and it takes longer to get to you. So as long as you've got something on, you should be good. If you look into that cutout hole I just talked about inside the concrete structure, you won't be able to see anything, and it's been described as complete darkness. However, if you go in that door inside the structure I just talked about, you'll notice that the area after the door is very similar to the hallways in level negative two. Link to that explanation down below. And the only difference is, instead of the lights being blue, they're red. And the halls themselves have small plaques on them that say New Year's 1945. Nice. The halls are supposedly infinite, but that's not confirmed. And these plaques are not the only things on the walls, and there are other things like World War II propaganda posters, not just ones from the USA or Japan, they're from other places too, like Britain and Germany. And all of the text on these posters are in their own native language. One thing that is noted about these posters is that the people on the posters have really unsettling smiles. Like, more unsettling than the thought of war. Kinda creepy. 
Really far into the halls, there's been some gas masks found on the floor, and they seem to be really old but still functional, except none of them have any filters for some reason. Every seven days on this level, the sky fills with shadows of bomber planes from the World War II era. These planes are flying fast, and they're all in different layers, and there's so many of them that just hearing all the noise from them might cause you to go temporarily deaf if you don't plug your ears. They all fly in sort of a grid pattern, and they're literally just a few feet away from each other in the air. These planes also drop quote-unquote bombs every few seconds, but these bombs don't actually hit the ground because they fade away right before they do, so they literally happen for no reason. It's still not determined if these planes should actually be categorized as an entity since they don't interact with people or cause any harm, so we don't know. The only danger that they even pose at all is the downdraft from all their wings. Sometimes it can cause a blizzard, but other than that, they're pretty chill. And you can enter level negative five by walking really far into level negative four, and you can exit the level by following those red lit hallways until you find the entrance to level negative six. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative six, which is classified as a class three difficulty and isn't safe, but it does have a low entity count, relatively. This level looks like a really old mine shaft with some random entities in it every so often. The level is a very new discovery, so not many people have even been here, and the only people that have are a meg team that's currently trying to set up an operation here to study it more. Scattered around this mine, there are some random flashlights and spotlights and matches on the floor right as you get into the level, which is obviously useful since it's dark. And sometimes the lighting here can change drastically, but typically, the deeper you go into the mine, the darker it gets. So eventually you can go so deep that you literally can't see anything. When you first get here, the mine shaft will be really cramped and short, but as you go further down it, it'll eventually open up into bigger rooms and caves, and then eventually after that, you'll walk into these huge caverns and quarries that are really dark. Now these huge open areas are really dangerous since you can't see anything, and the entities here will depend on how deep you go in. At the start of the mine, you can run into Reviooks, bursters and wranglers but when you get deeper and deeper into the caves the creatures that are there are not even documented so that's kind of spooky and at a certain point the mine shaft just stops and there's only huge caverns like i said and this area is called the game over area and it's really dangerous and the only entity there is the scumparsa which looks like a giant pterodactyl or a quetzal kinda if you played arc you know what i'm talking about they fly and hunt using echolocation, and they have this terrifying shriek when they do that. So if you're walking down the huge cavern and you hear a shriek, you're probably not going to make it. And no one knows what's past this huge cavernous area. There are actually two bases here. One of them is the Meg Outpost Blinding Dark, which is located just 300 feet into the level. And they got about 15 members. The other outpost is a really interesting one. It's called the Prophets, and they claim to be the original people who lived here. And they're all completely blind since they've been in the dark for so long. And there's around 30 of them, and they're relatively passive, but don't push their buttons, you know? To enter this level, well, there's no really solid way the Meg team entered by just walking deep into those hallways at level negative five, so that's the only way discovered as of now, and there's no discovered exit. But it's theorized that the exit is past that game over cavernous area, but I'm not gonna be the one sent there to try to find it out. 